is from Elizabeth use? Williamson. Yes, thanks, Elizabeth. And she'll be talking about reliability of feral honeybee hive density estimates based on drone sampling. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, I will start off by saying that I am on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains, and I pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. So I'm going to be presenting on the results I found in my honours project that looked at the reliability of a method that estimates the density of feral honeybee hive hives. Um, and it's based on drone sampling, uh, drones being male bees. And my supervisors were Scott Groom and Carter Hogan-Dorn from the University of Adelaide. And I was co-supervised by Nadine Chapman from the University of Sydney, who we just heard from. So everyone will know that feral, uh, honeybees are important for agricultural pollination and some figures to back that up are that 75% of produce benefits from bee pollination and this equates to roughly $1.7 billion annually in Australia. So to keep up with pollination demand, uh, growers will lease managed beehives from beekeepers. And here I've got a photo of some of these leased beehives are uh, in Lucan country here in South Australia. But there's also this uh, reliance on free pollination, which is defined as uh, pollination uh, services from unmanaged insects. So this can include flies, wasps, uh, importantly, native bees, but also um, in Australia, a substantial proportion of free pollination is provided from feral honeybees. And feral honeybees are, of course, at risk from Varroa destructor. So here I have the distribution of Varroa around the globe, and it is yet to establish in Australia. But when it does, we can expect to lose the free pollination values, uh, the free pollination services provided by feral honeybees. So this is an unquantified value. And if we could estimate the density of feral honeybees, this would help us determine what we stand to lose from Varroa. But there's another consequence of um, having heaps of feral honeybees in the landscape here in Australia, which has been discussed a little bit uh, already today, which is that uh, honeybees are invasive. They are not native. They were introduced around 200 years ago for um, pollination as well as honey and wax production. And Australia has turned into a bit of a feral honeybee hive sanctuary. Um, and while they're really important, they do compete with native wildlife, such as birds and mammals for nesting substrate in old eucalyptus trees, as well as uh, competing for food against birds and insects. So also why we want to know the density is so that we can kind of understand more about the negative consequences they're having in the landscape. And so the way we do this is we need to sample drones. And so we take uh, advantage of their mating strategy, uh, which Thomas uh, showed a little bit before, uh, which is drones that they aggregate in these places in the environment uh, that we call drone congregation areas or DCAs. And here I have a DCA that we identified at the weight oval. You can identify them because they have these really big clearings and they also have these linear um, borders which represent flight paths for the bees. So drones from surrounding colonies will aggregate at a DCA and wait for a queen on a mating flight. And when she arrives, they will follow her and attempt to mate. So uh, we take advantage of this strategy with a Williams trap. Uh, that is a pheromone lure that we impregnate with virgin queen sex pheromone. And here I have another video of the trap in action just to show how well it works. So once we've collected drones, we uh, obtained their microsatellites. So these genetic markers are really useful in determining relatedness. And what we can do with these drone haplotypes is infer the number of brother groups of the drones caught in the trap um, or SIB ships. And so with these SIB chips, you can also infer the mother queen genotype. And because one queen equates to one colony, you can infer the density estimate from this number. And this inference is done 
with the software colony, which deploys a maximum likelihood method. But there are a number of assumptions that these density estimates is based on. And so the assumptions that my research uh, is focusing on is firstly that a sample of more than 300 drones will represent most of the colonies in the environment. And the colonies that are not represented in a drone sample are small and weak and therefore ecologically insignificant. Another assumption is that a density estimate covers an area of 44 kilometers squared, which is based on the maximum flight distance of a drone, which is 3.75 kilometers. And then the last assumption is that a colony will contribute enough drones. So based on simulated data sets, it's been shown that you need on average six drones per SIB ship to ensure that you have um, an accurate sample size as well as having accurately inferred SIB ships. So if you have lower than six drones uh, per colony on average, then um, you get what's called a non-detection error where drones are assigned incorrectly to SIB ships. So this leads to my research questions, which are, do known colonies contribute drones to a sample? known colonies being um, colonies that I have identified and gotten their genetic fingerprint from in the environment. Uh, secondly, does hive size influence drone contribution? Drone contribution being the number of drones contributed per colony. Thirdly, does distance influence drone contribution? And lastly, do known colonies contribute enough drones on average of six? So this is an overview of my methods. Um, the first thing that I had to do was uh, identify feral colonies uh, that were surrounding the DCA that we identified at the way oval and measure their relative half size and distance and then sample their DNA. So I thought I would show, oh, so the way that I did relative half size measurements was I counted the number of returning bees for 30 seconds and I did this three times to obtain the average. And I thought I would show the way that we sampled the feral hives, which is using a novel method of shaking a flag at the end of a telescope pole at the entrance of a hive to get the bees nice and angry. And so they would sting the flag and we would obtain sting samples. Very effective method. So once we had obtained these um, measurements and samples of feral hives, I obtained the worker genotypes at the same microsatellites. And then I inferred that colony's known queen genotype um, by looking at what alleles were shared between all of the workers because all the workers are sisters. And then this allowed me to ask, did the queen contribute drones to the sample? And did the degree of contribution, um, was it influenced by hive size or the distance to the DCA we sampled at? So this research was conducted over two years. Uh, in 2019, we were able to expand our sample site to 7.65 kilometers squared. And over two years, I found a total of 81 hives, 16 of which were managed. And all of the feral hives um, I found were nesting in cavities of old eucalyptus trees. So the yellow pins represent colonies that I sampled. And in total, I had 57 colonies um, over the two years. So onto the results. Um, the first question being, do my known colonies contribute drones to a sample? Firstly, we got really high drone samples of around 1,500. And we got 65% of my known colonies having contributed at least one drone to a sample. But this left 35% having no contribution. So this is a significant non-sampling error. And importantly, this non-sampling error did not correlate with hive size and it did not correlate with distance. So something else is happening here. And the significance of this result is that you would be underestimating the density um, based on our sample sizes of about a third. So onto the second question, did the hive size influence the contribution of drones for those that contributed at least one? We found no significant correlation, but 
Somewhat excitingly, we found that distance did influence the drone contribution of colonies. So as a colony was uh, further away from the DCA we sampled at, they contributed fewer drones. And the significance of this is that colonies uh, that uh, have a greater distance likely um, contribute more to non-detection errors where you have wrongly assigned SIB ships by the colony program. So onto the last research question, do colonies contribute enough drones? Um, so on average, my known colonies contributed eight drones, but I want to pay particular attention to this red bar that I've added to the distance graph because it shows that after 0 0.9 kilometers, no colonies contributed enough drones to accurately infer the SIP ship. So what this would suggest is that non-detection errors are really prevalent after one kilometer. And it could call for maybe um, reducing that 3.7 kilometer maximum flight distance for density estimates. So it's just some take home messages from this project. Uh, we've raised questions about the assumptions that we set out to validate. Um, there was a really considerable non-sampling error of about a third, which would cause quite a large underestimate. And it was not correlated with hive size or distance. Uh, and the distance negatively influenced the drone contribution and SIB ships within one kilometer of the DCA we sampled at are more likely to be accurate than those that are further than that. So of course, there are some limitations that I think are important to address in my research, which are that my measurements for relative high size uh, are not perfect, although I found that they were significant throughout years and they do show um, differences, like big differences between hive size of colonies. They don't show the smaller differences in hive size. And that's probably because it's influenced by forager activity throughout the days. Um, the next limitation is that I didn't cover the whole 44 kilometers squared and I only covered 7.65. And lastly, the landscape was not uniform. And I think that's important to mention as this is my sample zone you'll see that two thirds roughly of the landscape are covered by urban area. This is Lucent country here in South Australia and you'll see it is a lot more uniform and uh, different landscapes would likely influence how drones uh, go to a trap or a court. And this requires further investigation, which leads me to future directions because there are several more things that we should work on before um, we can deem this method reliable which is we've looked at an area with really high density of feral honeybees, but it would be interesting to see if this method works at low densities. We also wanna see what this um, non-sampling area is from, if it's not from hive size or distance, um, I'm thinking maybe it's something to do with swarming. Uh, it would also be great to look at the influence of distance over the whole 44 kilometers squared to get a clearer picture of what's happening. And this could help us uh, come up with the correction factor for distance, which could be implemented into um, the density estimate. And then lastly, um, some investigations into the colony software are warranted because we want to make sure everything there is working. So I'd like to thank everyone who helped me with this project uh, and all of the funding bodies and of course the conference organisers. That's me. <laughs> Good on you, Elizabeth. Lucky last. Yeah. And did a great job. Bring your son. So, do we have some questions for Elizabeth on that very interesting talk? Uh, I had one. Um, I posted it in the chat, but I'll say it out loud. Um, the drones that are from more than a K away, uh, you said they often uh, result in the um, uh, non-sampling error. Um, are they also messing up with the SIB ship assignment from drones within that one kilometer? Because I know Colony tries its best to like fit things together as much as possible. Um, and if so, how could we get around this? Yeah, so I've got the graph back up. So after 0 0.9 kilometers, none of my colonies contributed more than six. Mm -hmm. So it's not the non 
sampling error that is influenced by this, but the non-detection error. So yeah, how Colony assigns sieve ships. Um, what happens is Colony either splits up one brother group into separate families, so you get an overestimate, or it groups different drones from different families into one, so you'd get an underestimate. The way around this, I think, would be a correction factor. So even though you still have colonies within the one kilometer that have less than six, um, it does seem that distance would play a role in um, increasing the error at certain places. So the correction factor could look like something that um, you predict how many you expect to um, miss or that you expect to do an error in sibship assignment. And then that would be, yeah, the correction factor to include in the density estimate. But if you have any ideas, I would love to hear them because, um, yeah, it's a complex issue, this one. <laughs> oh, I, I can imagine. I assume, I assume it's just modeling, modeling, modeling to get that kind of like specific uh, parameter for each situation that you're in. No, great. Thank you. Okay, we've got one minute more. Any other questions? Elizabeth? All right, just a quick one. How did they, who came up with the 3.7 kilometers? I might've missed that, but is that based um, on European data or? No, so that, that was done here in Australia quite recently from the B lab at the University of Sydney, um, ah, at the right. VU Tapenon. And essentially what they did was they marked drones and then they um, did the Williams trap at certain distances. And then they saw how fly, like how far a drone would fly at different distances. So it is the maximum flight distance. Um, yeah, do so- think, Do you think I, drones can fly further in some areas than others? Could it be something to do with Adelaide being dry? I don't know, some- <laughs> Yeah, so that kind of comes to the limitation that I brought up about different landscapes potentially influencing drone flight. I think something that needs to be looked at as well is um, so the place where I sampled it did have hilly regions. Um, how drones travel or choose what DCA to go to, um, there's not much understood about that. So yeah, that's certainly an area of research that needs further investigation. Okay, thanks very much.